Good afternoon, folks. Uh, welcome to the webinar on Kiwi Viewer and mobile app development with VTK and, and Kiwi and VES. My name is Pat Marion. I'm an engineer at Kitware, and I'll be hosting today. So the topics that I'd like to cover are what's new in Kiwi Viewer 2.0. That's the uh, new release in the App Store for iPads and iPhones that came out last week. Uh, and then I, I'd like to show some demos of Kiwi Viewer and ParaView and uh, Kiwi Viewer and Midas. And then if there's time, I'll get, get into technical information about some iOS and Android tutorials, although I practiced this yesterday, and uh, the 20-minute webinar is just not long enough to, to get too far after the demo. So maybe we can host another one afterwards uh, in the future. Um, so before I get started with the demos, I wanted to uh, list some online resources. The best place to go is the wiki page, and that's going to have links to all the other resources. There's the uh, public mailing list, which you uh, can subscribe to to post to and, and receive responses. And there you can get in touch with me and the other developers on the Kitware uh, mobile team. There's also the developer's guide, which is going to have instructions for getting the software and building the software. Uh, we have a bug tracker and a software quality dashboard. And there's also the API documentation uh, using Doxygen. I also wanted to point out that we've uploaded binary packages. If you visit packages.kitware.com, um, there you'll find frameworks for iOS and an example Xcode project, which you can use to uh, get started. And that example project actually comes with frameworks bundled, so that's a fully standalone download there. And then we also have a new experimental uh, Android installer, which is uh, a, ver a new version of Kiwi Viewer for Android, which is going to have many of the features that I'm going to demo today. But this version does not have the new user interface uh, that we have on iOS. So uh, without that user interface, some of the features are not going to be available. Um, so now I'm going to switch and, and show you some demos here. Um, so for the webinar today, I'm going to be using the um, the iPhone simulator. Uh, so here is Kiwi Viewer running in the simulator. I'll press the home screen so you can see what that looks like. Um, and so you can launch Kiwi Viewer, and uh, the default screen is the um, the Documents tab. So Kiwi Viewer uh, two is a tabbed application, and you have the Documents tab, then the 3D scene, which has a toolbar at the top and then the info tab which has some links to our help documentation and there's also some settings which control uh, some of the features in Kiwi Viewer. So the first thing I want to show actually is how you can get data onto Kiwi Viewer uh, by using ParaView. So ParaView is a desktop application and I'm now switching uh, to ParaView and what we're looking at is a mesh of uh, a segment of the aorta. This is actually, there's an abnormality here. This is, there's an aneurysm in this aorta. And this is a mesh that was used in a, a blood flow simulation. Um, so if I remove the outer surface, we can see inside the data. And I've applied uh, the streamlines filter. And then you can see, if I really zoom in, these cones uh, give you an idea of the direction that the uh, blood is flowing. So this data set is made of a couple different pieces. We have the slice planes, the streamlines, and the, uh, the glyphs. And so in ParaView, you can customize uh, the visualization and customize the coloring, the color map. And then we have this button uh, here called Export to Kiwi, which I'm going to uh, click right now. And that actually is running a Python macro. ParaView has these, this concept of macros. Uh, we can actually open it up and look and see that it's just this Python script. And so if you have your own application besides ParaView, you could uh, customize this Python script to do a similar export. But what that's done is um, it's put the export right here on my desktop. So it took all those data files and it actually zipped them up and it dropped it on my desktop. And I'm going to extract that so we can look inside. And inside this folder, uh, we can see that there's all the data files that we were just looking at in ParaView. And then there's this scene file, which has a .kiwi extension. And now I can get this into Kiwi Viewer in several different ways. 
Uh, one way would be Midas. So here I'm logged into Midas, and if I click on My Folders, I can go to my home folder in Midas, and then uh, I just select Upload, and Midas presents me with this window where I can just drag and drop. So I can drop this zip file right there, and then uh, press Choose Location, and I'll choose to my own folder here, and then I can start the upload. Uh, the other way that you can get data into Kiwi Viewer is using iTunes file sharing. But since I'm using the simulator today, I'm not going to be able to use iTunes file sharing. But what I can do is I have this uh, shortcut to the Kiwi Viewer documents. So by dragging the zip uh, into the documents here, that's uh, copying it into Kiwi Viewer. So I'm going to switch back to the simulator now, and we can take a look at what that uh, is. So, so here's the zip file now in Kiwi Viewer. And when I click on that, uh, it's going to load up those uh, all those files and the scene file as well. And that scene file is going to give you, um, give it that look, so it looks just like in like it would in Paraview. All the objects are loaded together, and we get the custom color map. And uh, we can also now use Kiwi Viewer's scene settings and go to object settings, and we can actually see. Um, we can control the display parameters for these objects. Uh, so at this point, I'm going to switch over to the iPad instead of the iPhone so that we have a little more screen real estate. Uh, and then I'll just reopen that uh, same scene again. And now in the iPad version, when you go to the scene settings, uh, they come up in this popover. Uh, so you can still see your, your render view over here. Um, so in the scene settings, there's some basic details about the scene. That's vertex count and cell count. And it shows you your frames per second. Because I'm using um, the simulator, that's pretty low. But on the device, this would be 30 frames per second. And we can get an idea of the memory usage. Um, if I go to object settings, we can see the four different objects. I'm going to uh, change the visibility on some of them to turn them off. Uh, and then I'll just have the, the slice planes visible and show you some of the object settings that we can apply. So there's opacity, so we can um, make, make the objects in the scene a little see-through. Or uh, the style we can change from surface into surface with edges. And this is a nice visualization because it lets us see the triangulation of our mesh. Um, we can adjust the line width. Or we could go to uh, wireframe mode. And finally, points. Uh, if you just wanted to see the points, then you can adjust the point size like that. Uh, Kiwi Viewer also has, you could make a solid color, and then Kiwi Viewer has this color selection um, option here. So you can choose a solid color for your model. And that color selection, uh, you can also adjust the background color that way too. So we could um, set a custom background color. Um, so now I'd like to show you some of the built-in data sets. Uh, actually, let's see if Midas has, has finished. Yeah, so now my, that same zip file is uploaded into Midas. And the reason I really like Midas, so Kiwi Viewer can also do Dropbox, which is very convenient. But the great thing about Midas is that it's uh, a great way to share data. In Midas, you can have uh, communities. And instead of putting data just in your own personal folders, you can share it in communities with other people. And Kiwi Viewer can browse Midas. So I'm going to um, show you what that looks like. Uh, you just tap on Midas, and it loads up. All, these are all the public communities. And you can see one of them is called Kiwi Viewer. And if we look in there, we can actually find the sample data, which is shipped with Kiwi Viewer. And that's hosted online on Midas. Um, but what I wanted to show you is that I could sign in and um, once you've signed in, now Midas is going to show me my personal files. And we can see that zip file right there that I had uploaded to Midas. And then when you download it, uh, you'll get this download box with, with progress. 
And so this is just downloading the same data that we'd already been looking at. Uh, so I, I'll cancel and I won't actually do that. Um, there's also download from URL, which is a nice way to, if you have a URL to a data set, you can just paste it right in there, uh, type it in, and then uh, you can download that. Um, some of the sample data sets that are included with Kiwi Viewer, I'd like to show. Um, we have this animation, so I'll, I'll do this. So you can actually package multiple files and view them as an animation. So I don't know how well the frame rate will show up on the webinar screen sharing, but uh, when the animation is paused, if you, if you slide along the left edge of the screen, you can move forward and backward through the animation. Um, so this is um, a, some time steps from an animation of a finite element analysis of this can, uh, this mesh down here is a, is a can being crushed by a block. Uh, but we also have this uh, LiDAR data set, which is uh, LiDAR data from a Velodyne sensor, uh, which is mounted to a car driving down the street. And so here we have about 20 frames of animation as the car drives forward, and it's, it's really great. The LiDAR data uh, intensity picks up things like uh, the street signs are high intensity because they're retro reflectors and same with the um, lane markings. So this is kind of an interesting one. You can actually see the lane markings on the ground there. Um, we also have a point cloud data set here. So this is a, the PCD data extension. That's the point cloud library. Um, so if uh, you're a user of, of that file format, uh, QE Viewer supports it now. Um, and now I wanted to show you um, the image viewer. So this is a image volume coming from the National Library of Medicine's Visible Human Project. And um, this is actually a volume, so I can click on the 3D button and we can see what it looks like in 3D. And in 3D you can manipulate the slice planes to adjust them to scroll through the different slices of the volume. Uh, but in 2D mode you can also change slices um, by sliding along the right edge of the screen. And you can also change the window and level by uh, sliding left and right and up and down in the view. And then you can pinch to zoom and when you're zoomed in you can then pan around the image. Uh, and these buttons in the toolbar allow you to change uh, the image axis that we want to look along. Uh, if your image orientation needs to be adjusted, there's this rotation button so that you can rotate um, in 2D mode. Okay, so I have uh, about eight minutes left and I wanted to go back to my slides and, and now talk about Kiwi Viewer, the technology behind Kiwi Viewer. Um, but I encourage you, if you have not already, to download uh, this app and explore. There's a lot more sample data sets that I didn't show here. Um, and explore that. And there's also other demos that I, I won't have time to show today. Um, there's Paraview Web, uh, which uh, Kiwi Viewer will connect to. Uh, Paraview Web is a, is a um, web interface to Paraview. Uh, you can actually have shared um, sessions there, so multiple people can be connected to the same visualization and interact with it. And Kiwi Viewer can act as a client and connect to that. The Paraview Mobile Remote. This is a really cool demo, and there's a video on the, um, on the release blog that we posted last week um, of that. And that's a way that you can send data directly from Paraview to your mobile device. And then the mobile device, uh, when you interact with the camera, that will um, send your camera movements back to Paraview. And then there's the point cloud streaming demo. Uh, this, uh, pairs with a, a mobile server that's part of the point cloud library where you can actually send uh, point clouds from uh, RGB plus depth devices like the Kinect camera. Um, those point clouds can be sent along with the vertex colors and you can stream them directly to QViewer and, and watch them. So I'm going to go back to my PowerPoint slides now just to give um, a quick overview of the libraries that are involved in an application like Kiwi Viewer. Um, and these libraries are, are uh, 
open source code that you can download and use to develop your own apps. So the first thing to point out is that um, mobile apps are going to do their rendering, their visualization with OpenGL ES. Uh, ES stands for Embedded Systems, and this is going to be a subset of the desktop OpenGL. So um, an application like Paraview that I was showing, uh, which is built on top of VTK, is using a lot of VTK, including VTK's uh, rendering capabilities, which are implemented using desktop GL. But on mobile devices, we need to use OpenGL ES, and the version used by Android and iOS devices is, is ES 2.0. And so that's where this DES library comes in uh, that I'm going to present now. So this is what the um, software stack will look like when you're developing mobile apps with VTK and, and Kiwi and DES. And everything um, below this line is cross-platform C++ libraries. So Kiwi and VS, uh, they're going to run on iOS and Android, but you can also just run them on your uh, desktop computer. They, they should run on any operating system, Linux or Mac OS or, or Windows. And then above the line is, is um, your mobile app code. So if you're on iOS, you're actually programming in Objective-C, and for Android, you're programming in Java. And through those languages, you're then going to interact with the C++ libraries. Uh, VTK is, is um, at the core, so we use a lot of VTK. VTK has all the filters that we're using to process the data and the readers we're using to load the data, and, uh, but we can't use VTK's rendering. VTK is actually modular and has a, has, has a core rendering library, which we can use, which has a lot of nice functionality, like the ability to render text in, into textures, and then we can use VES to render those textures. Um, the next library is VES. This is a very uh, lightweight uh, library with, with no dependencies. So the VES library does not actually use VTK directly. VES is a standalone um, rendering engine built on top of the OpenGL ES 2.0 API, although there is a version of it which is um, able to support the prior version of OpenGL EF 1.0. Um, next is Kiwi. So Kiwi is built on top of VTK and VES. It's, Kiwi is an um, application library that ties together the VTK and the VES libraries, and it provides a uh, higher level application interface so that you don't always have to work with low level rendering objects or low um, or the VTK filtering objects, although you're certainly allowed to uh, use those directly. So Kiwi has high level uh, methods like this one. So load data set, it takes a file name as a string and it loads the data. Uh, but you can see that this is really application specific. So Kiwi Viewer provides one implementation to this, but uh, when you develop your own apps, you might not want to use this method at all because you might want to have uh, control over the behavior, how you handle errors, and, and what you do to convert a file name as a, as a string to actually loading the data. Uh, another example of an application function is this one, which handles a, a two-touch pan gesture. And so it's up to the application to decide, do you want this gesture to be routed towards the camera to move the camera, or maybe the user uh, clicked up, touched an object and we should be manipulating an object. So this is really a um, application-specific uh, interface. Um, and likewise, now those touch events, uh, we can handle them in QE and the C++ library, but the touch events are actually generated by the operating system. So uh, the iOS operating system or Android operating system is what's actually generating those touch events. So you need code that's at the iOS and Android interface level uh, to receive those touch gestures and then send them down to the QE library. And so um, our source code includes uh, examples in iOS and for Android, but we don't actually have libraries at this layer, but we have uh, classes and files that are reusable, such as uh, touch translators and, and um, also some view classes which, which uh, demonstrate how to, how to um, do things asynchronously. For example, loading data on a separate thread and then updating the view after the data has loaded. Um, a quick note on memory management. So VES and QE use shared pointers. 
Um, they use the tier one shared pointer, but you could replace that with boost if, if you prefer boost. And then I wanted to point out that these three lines here all uh, essentially mean the same thing. And I prefer this last style. It's, it's just less typing, although for forward declarations, you could use uh, this uh, style here. So I only have a minute left to go in this uh, webinar, and I had planned to do um, tutorials on, on um, Xcode and show you how to, to make an app in Xcode and then also Android, but clearly there won't be time for that in this webinar. Um, so maybe we can schedule another one in the future and I can um, focus maybe a whole webinar on iOS and a whole one on Android. Uh, but what I will show you is just uh, in Kiwi Viewer, uh, I mean in Xcode, the Kiwi Viewer project, um, it's a modern style project. Previously we had an older one, but now it's using um, storyboards and automatic reference counting, and it uses the GL kit in order to provide the rendering context. So this is uh, what the storyboards look like for the Kiwi Viewer project, uh, but I also have just this Kiwi Simple uh, Xcode project which just has um, one file here for the view and then one file here for the gesture recognizer. And um, I'll run this on the iPhone and you can see what Kiwi Simple looks like. So this is the Xcode application that you can download either through our source code or it's also posted at packages.kitware.com. And this is just kind of a hello world type application. Uh, when you run it, it just shows a full screen um, render viewer and it loads the teapot data set. And so if you want to get started developing, you should, you should check this out and um, this, this is kind of the, the best modern example we have for using Kiwi Viewer on iOS. Uh, for Android, we have something similar. Um, get in touch with us on the, um, the mailing list if you'd like to learn more and uh, I thank you for attending the webinar today.